Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday is the Sunday of the Word of God. Pope Francis asks us to give importance today to God's Word. In every celebration of the Mass, the Word of God is proclaimed to us. Let us pay attention to God's words. Let us listen to God's words and let us fulfill and put into action the words of God that we have received. And so, as we prepare ourselves to receive God's Word and to receive the body of Jesus, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, 
Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday, in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of those people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then, Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you. O Lord, my rock 
and my Redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body as one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with great propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitness from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, 
to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. And uh, I would like to thank all of you for joining us in this celebration of the Sunday Eucharist. Special thanks also to the many other thousands who are joining us through the online streaming of this celebration. But I would like to thank God most specially today because starting this Sunday, every 8 a.m. Sunday Mass of the Manila Cathedral, we will be having a sign language interpreter that for those who are watching online, you can see at the lower part of the screen so that our deaf and mute brothers and sisters can participate fully in the celebration of the Eucharist. What a great privilege on the Sunday of the Word of God that we are now able to preach the Word of God even to our brothers and sisters who are deaf and mute. It is truly a great day that we are able to join with them in this celebration. Kaya maraming salamat. No? Thank you no? in sign language. Thank you for the ministry of the interpreters and signers of the Archdiocese of Manila for helping us every Sunday. I hope we could continue this at 8 a.m. Palakpakan naman po natin yung ating mga interpreters and signers. As I have said earlier, my dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday is the Sunday of the Word of God. Pope Francis reminds us today of the importance of God's Word in the life of Christians, in the life of Catholics. But as we commemorate today this Sunday of the Word of God, I would like first to pose a question to all of us. If we celebrate today 
the Sunday of the Word of God, I think we should ask ourselves today also, do words still matter to us? Are words still important to us? Kung ipinagdiriwang po natin ngayong linggo na ito, ang linggo ng salita ng Diyos, siguro magandang tanungin muna natin ang ating sarili. Mahalaga pa ba sa atin ang salita? Mahalaga pa ba sa atin ang sinasabi ng isang tao o sinasalita ng isang tao? Yes, we proclaim the Word of God every Mass. We listen to the Word of God every Mass. Sometimes you even enthrone your Bibles on your altars. But do we still give importance to words? Do we still pay attention to words? Nakikinig nga tayo ng salita ng Diyos sa misa, pero pinapakalagahan pa ba natin? Nag, do we pay attention to the words? Naalala ko po minsan, nag-post po kami ng announcement sa Facebook page ng Manila Cathedral tungkol sa schedule ng mga misa. So, nag-post po kami ng announcement nandoon ng mga oras ng misa araw-araw hanggang linggo. Naku, may nag-comment, what time po ang mass? Naku, ayan na. No? <laughs> Na-post na nga. <laughs> nag-comment pa, what time po ang mass? Uh, hindi nag-pay attention sa words. Baka yung picture lang ang tiningnan, hindi binasa. <laughs> Minsan, nag-announce kami na Bukas na ang Manila Cathedral sa mga magsisimba. Magko-comment, bukas na po ba ang Manila Cathedral? No? Do you pay attention to words? Baka kapag nagtingin tayo sa announcement, yung picture lang, yung video lang tinitingnan natin. Pero hindi natin pinapahalagahan ang words. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the Sunday of the Word of God, let us first ask ourselves, do we still pay attention to words? Do words matter to us? Sadly, in our gospel reading today, Jesus experienced the same Jesus went home to his hometown in Nazareth and he preached during the Sabbath day in their synagogue. Unfortunately, the people in Nazareth did not pay attention to his words. They already judged Jesus according to his appearance, according maybe to his economic status. In our gospel reading today, we hear of Jesus preaching this beautiful passage from Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. A beautiful passage from the prophet Isaiah. But later on in that gospel passage, we will see that the people asked, Isn't this the carpenter's son? Sayang! Ang ganda ng sinabi ni Jesus. Parang nag-homily siya sa sinagoga. Pero yung mga tao, hindi nakafocus sa words. 
saan nakafocus? Sa itsura ni Jesus. Kaya ang sabi nila, eh hindi ba anak lang yan ng karpintero na kapitbahay natin? Eh bakit ako makikinig dyan? Mahirap lang naman yan. Hindi maayos nga siguro ang pananamit at simpleng-simple lang siguro ang suot ni Jesus. Hinusgahan na agad nila si Jesus sa itsura pa lang, sa yaman o sa hirap pa lang niya. Sayang, hindi nila binigyang halaga ang salita. My dear brothers and sisters, do words still matter to us today? Do we still pay attention to words? In this age of uh, the digital age, the age of technology, the age of social media, in this age when we are focused on appearances, photos, videos, dance, memes, do we still pay attention to words? Baka masyado tayong nakafocus sa picture, sa video, sa itsura, at nakakalimutan na natin ang salita, ang sinasabi ng tao. Kaya nga minsan sa social media, kapag nakita natin minsan na, oy parang maganda itong nakikita ko, no? Kaya yung iba pang nagpo-post sa social media, magpapakita ng skin, no? Ilalabas ang balat, no? Kasi kapag nakita, ah, sexy yata itong nakikita ko, naku, ikiklik. Nakafocus sa itsura, sa appearance, pero hindi na nakafocus sa salita. In this age of appearances, do we still pay attention to words? In our first reading today from the book of Nehemiah, the people of Israel learned about the importance of words. The people of Israel came from the exile sila ay nabilanggo sa ibang bansa, kinuha ng mga mananakop. And when they were freed by God, they returned to Israel. And they realized that all their sufferings were brought about by the fact that they did not give importance to God's words. That is why when they returned to Israel, the first thing Ezra, the priest, and Nehemiah, their leader, did was to open the Word of God and read to them the Word of God. Naisip nila, kaya pala tayo nagdusa, kaya pala tayo naghirap, kasi hindi na tayo nakinig sa salita ng Diyos. Kaya noong may bago na silang pinuno, sabi nung kanilang pinuno, simula ngayon, makikinig na tayo sa salita ng Diyos. So what they did was to read the Word of God, many of them stood up, they listened carefully. Some of them are even crying. Some of them rejoicing upon listening to God's Word. Alam niyo po minsan natutuwa ako kapag nagkohomili ako at nakikinig kayo. <laughs> Unang-una yun. No? Siyempre natutuwa ako kapag nakikinig kayo. Pero minsan natutuwa rin po ako kasi Minsan may nakikita ako no sa inyo na may dalang notebook at nagte-take ng notes no minsan may napapansin ako diyan no 
minsan may nagpi-picture pa, no? Sana hindi lang picture, no? Minsan may nagvi-video or sometimes they record the homily. Okay lang ho sa akin 'yan. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Kung gusto niyo magdala ng Bible, gusto niyo magdala ng notebook, gusto niyo yung video kan yung homily ko, okay lang ho 'yan. Kasi ibig sabihin niyan, hindi naman ako ang pinakakalagahan niyo. Yung salita ng Diyos. Yung mga nanonood sa atin online. It is good that sometimes maybe you want to take notes. You want to take a beautiful quotation from the Bible that was read to us. Do it. It is a sign that we give importance to the Word. And if we learn how to give importance to words, then we also give importance to the person and say to that person, yes, I would like to listen to your word because you are important to me. You have something to say to me. You have a voice. I will listen to your word. If we pay attention to words, we also give importance to the person. Kapag mahalaga sa iyo ang isang tao, makikinig ka sa kanyang sinasabi. Sapagkat para sa iyo, mahalaga ang salita ng bawat isa. In our second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, St. Paul teaches us that in the church, the body of Christ, every part is important, even the smallest part. St. Paul uses in our second reading today a beautiful imagery. He said, the ear is important. The hands are important. The feet are important. The eyes are important. Hindi pwede daw sabihin ng tenga sa kamay na hindi ka makalaga. Ako lang ang makalaga. Hindi rin pwedeng sabihin ng mata sa paa na ako ang makalaga at ikaw hindi. Sabi ni San Pablo, bawat isa sa atin makalaga. Lalo na ang pinakamaliliit na parte ng katawan, mahalaga. That is why everyone in the church has a voice, has a word, and we need to listen to their words because they are important parts of the body. Ngayong araw, sinabi ko kanina na mayroon na tayong sign language interpreters in our 8 a.m. Sunday Mass. It is an acknowledgement to our brothers and sisters who cannot hear, who cannot speak, that you are important. You have a voice. You have a word in the church. Sa mga kapatid po nating nanonood na mga hindi nakakarinig at hindi nakakapagsalita, tuwing 8 a.m. mas may sign language interpreters na po tayo. Sinasabi ng simbakan sa inyo, mahalaga kayo, may boses kayo, may salita kayo, nakikinig ang simbakan. Nitong mga nakaraang araw na panood ko sa balita, yung mga ordinaryong tao na nagko-commute, nagre na, pagod na. Sabi nila, napapagod din kami. Pagod na pagod na kami. Sana wag agad tayong magalit sa kanila. Kasi yung iba, hinuhusgahan agad sila. Pero sabi ni Jesus, huwag agad husgahan, makinig. Meron silang gustong sabihin. Meron silang boses. 
meron silang salita. The elections are coming. It is important for us to listen to the words of the candidates. Kaya nga mahalaga ang interviews at debates. Because in those instances, we can hear the words of the candidates. And we give importance to them. Huwag sanang sasabihin na hindi mahalaga ang mga debate at interview ng mga politicians. Mahalaga. Kasi dito, binibigyan natin sila ng halaga. May boses kayo. Meron kayong salita na nais naming marinig. Sana, wag lang tayong nakadepende sa picture ng kandidato. Baka sa picture lang, ah, yan ang ibuboto ko, no? Maganda yung picture niya. Sana wag lang tayong nakadepende sa sayaw o kanta ng kandidato. Baka nakita na, ah, magaling siyang sumayaw, magaling siyang kumanta. Pay attention to the words. Sabihin natin sa mga kandidato, wag mo kaming sayawan, no? Wag mo kaming ngiti-ngitian. Wag mo kaming daanin sa kanta. Wag mo kaming daanin sa poster. Wag mo kaming daanin sa ads, sa social media at sa mga videos. Magsalita ka. Para marinig namin. Mahalaga ka, kaya gusto naming marinig ka. Magsalita. Pay attention to words. My dear brothers and sisters, in this celebration of the Mass, we focus on God's Word. And Jesus teaches us today to pay attention to words. In this age, when we focus only on appearances, let our celebration today teach us to give importance to words. And when we pay attention to words, we also give importance to persons. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God instructs us through His prophets, His apostles, and His own anointed Son. We pray for strength to persevere in God's eyes. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that those anointed to lead the church may be prophets of truth and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the word of God in scripture and tradition may be spirit and life for people today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That captive 
that captives of drug or alcohol addiction may find freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That, as many parts of one body, we may work for the poor and marginalized in our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may enjoy the complete freedom of Christ the Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions, for all the intentions offered in this Mass, and the people who ask for our prayers. Father, hear the prayers of your church, one body filled with one spirit, one people called by your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
O sana in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the power for and the glory kingdom, are yours, The power and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like again to thank all of you who have joined us in this celebration of the Eucharist. Salamat po sa mga dumayo pa sa Manila Cathedral at sa ating mga regular Sunday Mass goers dito po sa Manila Cathedral. Again, bukas na po ulit ang Manila Cathedral. No? Hindi po tayo nagsara at uh, sana po ay tuloy-tuloy din yung ating pagbubukas at uh, kung tayo ay maaari na rin dumalo ng pisikal sa ating banal na misa. And we would like also to thank the many who are continuing uh, to follow us here at the Manila Cathedral watching our online masses and the different social media pages who are broadcasting also this Sunday Mass. And uh, special thanks again to the Interpreters and Signers Ministry of the Archdiocese of Manila. Be assured that every Sunday at 8 a.m., our Mass will have a sign language interpreter for our all of our brothers and sisters. And uh, also special thanks to Father Alex Thomas, who is heading this ministry in the Archdiocese of Manila, uh, the ministers and other collaborators of their ministry. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you now and forever. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds now and forever. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Bye.